Hello, and welcome to another Science Man digital lesson. Today, we're going to talk about the conversion of potential to kinetic energy. And in this case, we're going to use a, a block of ice on a ramp. You can see I've got that set up here, and I've also got this simulation set so that the friction of the block and the slope is zero. Now, if you look, I've got a graph up here, and this graph is joules versus time. So I've got the kinetic energy tied to the block. And this scale is one, two, three joules. So let's uh, release this block at the top of the slope and see how much kinetic energy builds up as the potential energy due to gravity is converted to kinetic energy. And you can see, if we look carefully at our graph, you can see that the kinetic energy reached a maximum of about, oh, about 2.8 joules. So, what does that mean in terms of how much potential energy we started with? And what happened with the conversion? Well, if we look very close, we see the height of our ramp is 28.8 centimeters. So, if we do a quick calculation, of the potential energy, and potential energy formula is mass times gravity times height. Now this block has a mass of, of 1 kilogram, and gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, and then we'll multiply that by the height, which is 0.288 of a meter. And lo and behold, we get uh, 2.8 or 2.825 joules. So that is very, very close to the kinetic energy that we ended up with at the bottom of the ramp. Now that yields for us a, a very interesting mathematical relationship because if we take a look at the two formulas for potential and kinetic energy, we have potential energy which is equal to mass times gravity times height, and kinetic energy, which is equal to one-half mass times the velocity of the object squared. So if PE is equal to KE, that is, if all the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy, that must mean that MGH is equal to one-half mv squared. Now if you look really closely on both sides of this equation, you'll see m and m. Now, if we do a little bit of algebra here, we can cross off those m's because they're on both sides of the equation. So we're left with a, a smaller equation to represent the conversion of potential to kinetic energy. Now if we rearrange that a bit, we end up with this. Velocity is equal to the root of 2gh. That is, the root of 2 times the uh, acceleration due to gravity times the height. Now this can be a very useful, a very useful um, formula for when you're in situations where you have an object, let's say, falling in a frictionless environment. Let's say a object falling in a vacuum. Or if you had an object going down a slope and it was subject to very little friction. So go ahead and try out this formula yourself when you need to find the velocity of a falling object and you need that velocity at the end of its motion. So thanks again for viewing another ScienceMan.com digital lesson and just as a reminder uh, these uh, lessons are constructed with the help of a simulation software uh, called Yanka and you can try it out for yourself by visiting Yanka.com. Thanks again.